Hello everyone. Today we're going to take a look and install uh, Call Manager 11.5. So first we're going to go into our VMware. This particular one is a small UCS box. And so we're going to go ahead and uh, take a look at what needs to be done to install uh, Call Manager 11.5 or Unified Communications Manager 11.5. So there's a few things that we need to take a look at. First, we need to we need to get the images. Uh, we need to get two kinds of images. One, we need to get the OVA. Okay, that's the template that we need to be able to uh, install. Let me get that from Cisco. Okay, this particular one. If you go to your downloads uh, on cisco.com, you type in call manager. And it's an A. There we go, call manager. Okay. In this particular version, we're looking at 11.5. Okay. And we want to look at virtual machine templates. That's the first thing we're going to look at. Okay. Uh, there's only two. The latest one uh, is here. So we download that. I've already got that downloaded. Um, and then the other thing we need is the actual image uh, to be able to install. Now, these particular images are not bootable. So you will need to get to make them bootable. And I have another video uh, that I will link in the uh, description here that it tells you how to do that. So, uh, but in this case, we'll go ahead and download that. Um, again, I already have it downloaded. So, um, uh, and then we and then you, get, you go ahead and make sure that that is bootable. And what you also need to do is then once you have that image and it is bootable, then you need to upload that to your data store so that it will be there and ready for your install when you're ready. Okay, so let's go ahead and create uh, a new virtual machine. And we're going to do that with our OVA template that we just downloaded. So here it is. I have that on my desktop. I'm just going to drag it over here and I'm going to give it a name. Uh, we're going to call it UCM Pub. Five. Click next. Okay, give us some information there. Um, this particular template gives us a deployment type and how many users. Uh, I'm just going to pick the default. You can go less. You can go to, you know, this is for a smaller UCS box, but you can go 2500. I'm just going to pick the, the default here. Okay, I'm just going to make it thin provisioned. I don't want to power it on automatically yet because I still need to put a uh, bootable image uh, on there before I can boot it up. So I'm going to go ahead and uncheck that. Now we have, uh, it gives us a couple other things. For some reason in this version, um, it adds another disk, but it does tell us here it's, it's going to be one. So it's not really going to add that. So uh, this is just informational. I'm going to tell you everything that's going to be happening here. Okay. Go ahead and finish that. We wait for that to finish. Okay. We are done. We're going to go ahead and take a look at that. Take a look at our VMware image now. <clears throat> okay, and, and it created it with two CPUs, three gigs of RAM, 110 gig hard drive. Okay, everything that is normal and that's part of that template. Okay, so now what we want to do is we need to edit and point the bootable image that we created. Okay. And we're going to point that at our DVD drive. And we set 
save that. Okay. And now we should be able to go ahead and boot that up. And it is booting. So here it is. Okay, so I know that this media is good, so I'm gonna go ahead and just go ahead and hit okay or skip on this one. Um, other times, if you don't know that that image is good, then you may wanna go ahead and do that. What it does is it just checks to make sure that everything is good as long as you have a checksum. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and skip that. through it now it's checking the hardware it's checking that everything is going to be good for this particular install okay and now we're going to come up and access what we want to install okay so we're going to go ahead and install a unified communications manager just accessing if that's the version that we want to do yes we're going to want to proceed Here we just want to go ahead and proceed with the wizard. Do we have an upgrade patch? In this particular case, no. This is the actual base image of uh, 11.5, uh, but it's service update not. Okay, so but we're going to go ahead and hit no because we don't need to upgrade it back. Continue. Now we want to do a uh, what time zone? I happen to be in the mountain time zone, so I'm going to go ahead and click done. <clears throat> okay, we don't need to change the NIC speed, and we don't need to change the uh, NTU size, so we're going to say no. Okay, do we want to use DHCP? No, we, we are going to set a static IP on here. All right, and now we're looking for a host name, so we're going to go with the same one that I put in the VMware. We're going to set a IP address. Okay. And our gateway address. Now, in a normal situation, what we're going to do is uh, the DNS name, the host name, will need to be spelled out in the DNS server. Um, in this particular case, this is a lab environment. I don't have a DNS server, and so I'm not going to use DNS. What it would do during the install is if you use DNS, it's going to reach out to that DNS server and make sure that the fully qualified domain name is reachable and can access it. If you don't put a DNS client on there and you don't uh, indicate what your DNS is, then it's going to just go ahead and bypass that and use the ID. So we're going to go ahead and hit no on this one. Okay. And we're going to put our administrator uh, username. This is for the actual platform administration, which is the CLI. Okay, so if you SSH into this, they'll stop the username and password that you will use. Oh, I had it too short of a password, so we're gonna make that longer and more complex. This is for the certificate. This is a default certificate. It is not a signed certificate. It is self-signed. That is just installed on there as uh, the installation. So we're just gonna 
Is this the first one known in the cluster? Yes, it is. And our NTP server. Now, I don't have a uh, NTP server set up internally as well, so I'm going to go ahead and use a public NTP server. Now, it is needed. It is absolutely needed for an NTP server. It will not let you continue without an NTP server. So you have to have at least one uh, NTP server for the time to be current. Okay, now this is our security password. You can set this to the same as your platform uh, administrator password, or you can set it different, whatever you want to do. But this is needed for uh, as it says, DRS encryption. Uh, it's used for uh, communication between uh, two nodes. And so this is uh, a very important step and very important that you remember what that password is. Okay, we're not gonna go ahead. And, we're not gonna set up an NTP server at this, uh, SMTP server at this time. Okay, um, these are some of the features that you can enable on this. Um, but we're not going to go. We're not going to set those up this time since this is just a lab environment. Okay. A couple of other things that Te Cisco TAC uses uh, for things um, that you can set up if you if you want, think that you're going to have problems during the install, you can set this up that it will send this information over to TAC. I think I missed, oh, there we go, okay. All right, here's the application. I'm gonna set it up as the same as the platform. Um, you don't have to do that. It can be separate. If, it, if you want it to be more secure, it can be separate. This is for the GUI administration website for call manager. Okay, the setup is complete. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit OK here. And now it's going to go ahead and start installing. It's gonna start setting up the different partitions that it needs as it's doing right now and go ahead and start installing the system, okay? So at this point, I'm gonna go ahead and pause the recording. I'm gonna fast forward this a little bit so that it will go, go up much faster. This will take quite a while for this to happen, maybe about 30 to 45 minutes. There is a portion where it will then check the network and verify that everything is okay network-wise once it gets that configured, and then it will continue and install more. Um, if there are any problems, that's where it will start. It stop is right at that network issue. Uh, if, for example, you were using DNS and it found that there was a DNS issue, then it's going to stop and say, "I'm sorry, I can't continue forward. We need to fix this DNS issue." Okay, so here's where I'll go ahead and fast forward, and we'll pick it up once it's complete. And we are finished. So this is what comes up when it is finished. Uh, it comes up with the normal 
login of the CLI. In this case, this is the console, but it says that it's completed successfully and gives the login screen. So at this point, uh, we should be able to put in the IP address that we used. And there it is, okay? And still waiting for some of the services to come up. So we got 404, um, still uh, there's a few services in the Tomcat that is not showing up quite yet. So we'll wait just a little bit longer and we'll be able to log in. <clears throat> and now it looks like we're in business. All right, so we're going to put our username and password in. And there we are. So now it's ready to be configured with phones and everything. A few warning signs that comes up at the very beginning. You're looking at demo licenses that you have for 60 days. Uh, and uh, in this version, this is 11.5. So it is the normal cool licensing that you're looking at. That, and the, there is a prime license manager that you will need to add your licenses to. Um, so that's it for the installation. I hope you, this has been insightful for you and has helped you uh, install uh, your server. Uh, if you have any questions, please comment below. I will also have a, uh, a blog post on my blog that will run through step by step uh, this whole process. So, uh, and that will be linked below as well. So please like and subscribe and I'll see you next time.